Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Giving is the secret to a happy life. That is counterintuitive because the ego doesn't want to give unless it's transactional. When the ego gives, it's always strategizing what it might get in return. That is generally what determines what and when the ego gives. The Divine Self knows better and gives not only because giving might be the right or natural thing to do, but because giving feels good. In the many millennia that the ego has been around, it doesn't seem to have noticed that giving feels good, that giving is its own reward. Ultimately, the ego just wants to feel good. It just hasn't discovered this open secret that giving is the best way to feel good. And it is the easiest. Because giving is in your control. You can always give love to whatever or whomever is in your midst, and that will always make you happy. The ego is stuck in looking for pleasure in all the wrong places. It isn't intelligent, or it would have learned this great truth about giving along the way. But the ego is just programming, and programming doesn't change on its own. The programming that is the ego doesn't evolve, not in any significant way. The ego won't eventually become the divine self. That's not what is going on in your spiritual evolution. The ego is not evolving into the Divine Self. Rather, the ego and the Divine Self coexist, and at different points in your evolution, one will be more prominent than the other. Until you're quite advanced spiritually, the ego is prominent. Early on in one's evolution, there's little awareness of the possibility of behaving any way other than the ego's way. As you evolve over many lifetimes, you begin to have more choice around your egoic and other programming. You develop a capacity to be objective about your behavior, and with that objectivity comes some degree of choice. Like a muscle that gets stronger with exercise, the more you consciously choose behaviors that are outside of your egoic programming, the easier it becomes to choose those behaviors again. You have to learn to be non-egoic. You have to learn to give and to love, since the ego, which is your default, does not naturally give, and it does not love. You have to learn to be the divine self that you innately are. Eventually, after many lifetimes of practice, you will choose predominantly from the place of love and divine perception, and the ego will hold little sway. That's where you are headed, and where some of you are already. That's enlightenment, and where the awakening process eventually leads. You are blessed to have this capacity to choose. It is the difference between suffering and not suffering. Without the awareness, objectivity, and love that belong to the Divine Self, you would forever be an ego. But that is not your destiny. Your destiny is to awaken from the egoic programming and become all that you can be, a Christed individual. Someone within whom Christ consciousness lives. What is a Christed individual? This can be defined by a person's behavior, since you could not be Christed and not have that show up in your behavior. The Christed individual behaves kindly, compassionately, and with acceptance, gratitude, and love for all and for life. The Christed individual is like an open space that receives life purely, without the tainted perception of the ego and responds to life naturally and spontaneously. Sometimes the Christed individual gives to life, 
Sometimes the Christed individual receives from life, depending on the needs of the moment. Allow me to explain. When you are open to life, without prejudice and ideas about how it should or shouldn't be, then you are open to what life brings to you through others and in other ways, and you are open to giving to life in ways that life is requesting. Yes, life gives, and it requests things from you. It does both. When you are awakened or enlightened, a Christed individual, you are aware of what life is bringing you and what life is requesting of you. This becomes clear. It's the ego that confuses this, but life is quite clear about this if you pay attention. Life is giving to you daily in many ways. It gives you life through your body. It gives you relationships with those who are your helpmates and your teachers. It gives you support through opportunities to work and give to others. And it gives you the air, water, and other sustenance your body needs. Life is constantly bringing you a life. All of these things make up what you call your life. But your life isn't really yours. You can't take credit for all of this. It is life that gives to you and makes it possible for you to have life and to have a so-called life. The ego takes credit for this, but it had nothing to do with these gifts or with the unfolding of life that naturally happens. And in return, life requests something from you. It requests that you breathe the air, drink the water, eat the food, and take advantage of the connections and opportunities it gives you. What good would it do if life gave you these things, but you didn't receive them? Much of what life requests of you is simply that you receive what it gives. That sounds simple, but the ego complicates this natural give and take with life. The ego often either overlooks what is given or rejects it for some reason, and that throws the flow of life off. Then life has to adjust. For instance, if you aren't receiving the air that life has provided because of some malfunction of the body, or if someone has polluted the air that has been provided, which happens if someone is not connected to the flow of life, then life adjusts by calling this to your attention perhaps through pain or a health issue that needs to be addressed. Even then, life is giving you something. It's telling you something you need to know. Or if someone has offered you an opportunity and you don't take advantage of that, then life might bring that opportunity to you again in another form or block the direction you're going in that isn't compatible with that opportunity. Life knows what direction is best for your life, and it brings you what you need for that. But you must be willing to receive what it brings you. You must be willing to take advantage of the opportunities that life brings you, and go in the direction that life is pointing you in. Yes, life points you in a certain direction, mostly by giving to you. It gives you signs of this direction, opportunities and benefits that entice you to go in this direction, and people who help you go in this direction and flourish in this direction. But you must be willing to say yes to what life gives. You must be willing to receive what life offers you. You might ask, what would resist such benefits and why? And that's a good question. It doesn't make sense that you wouldn't go toward what's beneficial to you. But the ego doesn't see things clearly. It misunderstands and misinterprets life because it has its own ideas about life. These ideas interfere with receiving what life is giving you because what life is giving you may not look like what your ego 
who you assume yourself to be, thinks your life should look like. The ego has a narrow perspective. It thinks your life should look a certain way, and the ego isn't very flexible about this. Mostly, the ego wants you to have a life where you're always on top, in power, and in control, where you always win, and where you have everything you want and people who love and adore you. This is egocentric, isn't it, if not narcissistic? The ego is a narcissist, and narcissists are never happy. They never have enough attention, adoration, power, control, money, fame, or any of the things the ego wants, because what the ego wants from life is an impossible request, an unrealistic request. Life doesn't give the ego everything it wants, not because life is terrible or cruel, but because the ego is mistaken in desiring such things. In that sense, life is kind. Like a parent that doesn't give a child all the candy he or she wants, life doesn't give the ego everything it wants. But like a good parent who gives the child what the child needs, so does life. Life gives you what you need, and what that is is good. It's a blessing, a gift. However, if you're stuck on wanting what the ego wants instead of what life is bringing you, then you will never be content and at peace. And worse, you probably won't be able to receive and take advantage of what life is bringing you. That's why people often overlook the goodness and beneficence of life. They're expecting and wanting something that their ego wants, instead of what is actually showing up in life. They have ideas that are different from what life is bringing them, and then they don't appreciate or even notice what life is bringing them. Such is the human condition. You are like a cup. When you are already full of your own ideas, the ego's ideas, there's no room for life to fill you up in the ways that it intends. There's no room to consider other possibilities. You are not open but closed. There's no room at the inn, so to speak, so Christ cannot enter your heart. So what has this to do with Christ? I will tell you. The ego captures you with its ideas, dreams, and desires, and then there is no room for other possibilities, ones you may never have considered or thought possible. Your goals are set, your perspective is set, and they are the ego's goals and perspective. You believe what you believe, and you don't question those beliefs or see life from eyes other than through those beliefs. The problem is that the ego's perceptions of life are the antithesis of how the Christed individual experiences life. Unlike the ego, the Christed individual doesn't pretend to know what will happen next in life or what's best for him or her. He or she doesn't live according to the usual desires. The Christed individual believes in life in the goodness of life, and trusts life's goodness. Beliefs, imaginations, dreams, and desires aren't what shape his or her life. The Christed individual allows life to shape his or her life. Beliefs, imaginations, dreams, and desires too often get in the way of really experiencing life, of living life freshly, and being open to whatever it might bring. The Christed individual holds his or her beliefs and other thoughts lightly, with the knowledge that they are not really his or hers at all, and therefore not meaningful. Many of you are still trapped within the human condition, trapped in your ego's perceptions of life. If you truly wish to be free of these perceptions, then surrender these perceptions. Surrender your beliefs 
imaginations, dreams, and desires, most of which belong to the ego, and just notice what life is bringing you. Then you will begin to experience life anew. You will see that life is bringing you exactly what you need. The only reason it might not seem this way is that you don't perceive what life is bringing as what you need. What if you saw this differently? What if you saw this as a Christed individual sees this? Life is always bringing you what you need. Not always what your ego wants, but what you need, what your soul wants. What life is bringing you is life's gift to you. You are free to accept it or reject it. What you choose to do with that gift will make all the difference in how your life turns out and whether it will be a happy life or not. If you stick with the ego's agenda for your life, you will be happy briefly, and that happiness will be followed as predictably as night follows the day with sadness. You will ride the roller coaster of the ego's ups and downs, depending on whether it's getting its desires met or not or you can begin to walk the path of a Christed being by noticing what life is giving you and then receiving that by saying yes to that. This is a path of going with the flow and saying yes to and being happy and at peace with whatever life brings. If you do that, your cup will be full of something other than ideas, beliefs, dreams, and desires. It will be full of love, joy, peace, and contentment, and that will spill out to others. That giving of your love, joy, compassion, strength, and peace to others is the most fulfilling thing you can do in life. That is what the Christed individual does. He or she is someone whose contentment Equanimity, love, and joy spill out and touch others and magically bring them into alignment with these gifts. When you give in this way, when your cup runneth over in this way, you are fulfilling your divine destiny and helping others fulfill theirs. It all starts with receiving what life offers you, which requires being open and empty. Empty yourself of your beliefs, imaginations, dreams, and desires, and discover what it's like to be a Christed individual and live a miraculous life. Life becomes miraculous when you say yes to the life that is unfolding in front of your very eyes. Notice what life is bringing you, and you will know how to move in life and that movement will be a joy to all. Thank you for being here. I am with you always.